naughty diddly do that, Chums, tis I, Captain of the Steez, and today, Chums, for you guys in the viewer verse, I'm going to be improving my Scottish rod crab that I picked up. Yes, I've got a lovely new pet, and I'm hopefully going to be enhancing it, changing its colour, maybe changing some of its attributes to make it awesome to give away. So this is the pet in question. It's rather brown, it's rather blue. I want to make it red for you. So yes, my colour scheme is red, white and black. And you can see here, this butter lilla is blue and yellow. So yeah, I want to be monkeying about with their DNA and changing them up somewhat. It's like this chap, Grass Licker. His name is Grass Licker because he doesn't fly. I want to make him slightly larger, maybe make him more airborne, and we might be able to call him Air Biscuit. This little chap, I want to make him a bright red rather than this horrible brown. So you know what? I need to go get some dirt, people. Yeah, so if you go to a mining area of space, you you can pick up dirt inside of the space station. Dirt seems to have red, white and black as the coloration scheme once you mix it into your creature's DNA under the dye area. But I'll show you that in a moment. For now, I'll show you how to find a mining area space. You're going to need the economy scanner installed in your starship, select it on the filter, use in your D-pad, and it's the sort of orangey browny star, that one there. You can see it's got the mining icon, and away we go. So once inside of the Spas Station, head on over to the Galactic Trade Terminal on the wall here and you will find dirt. You can buy all of said dirt, thank you very much for all that lovely dirt. I also tend to buy all the sodium, oxygen and cobalt because you can use these to boost your creature stats. And it's usually helpfulness and devotion that they tend to boost, which are the things that you really want if you want your creature to be slightly more automated and to be a little bit more helpful when gathering resources. It doesn't really work on the flying creatures. They don't really do nothing apart from land giant turds at your feet. Anyhow, so here we go. We're back down on the planet. Now let's have a quick look at our actual pet. Is it ready to lay an egg? Come on, little creature. Yeah, 24 hours have passed, people. Power of editing and that. Yes, we can now induce an egg. Brilliant, I had to take him back to his natural habitat. This creature's natural habitat is a swamp planet, people. So if you do want this crab, and you do want it to lay eggs, it's handy if you've got yourself a swamp planet and your repertoire of teleporting areas to go to. Maybe put a base down on a swamp planet prior to getting your crab creature. Right, oh, so yes, if you're watching this now and you're hopefully thinking I might give this away in one of the pet giveaways, which I will be, I will be fairly soon, but yeah, I've got to wait till it gets to adulthood and it needs to be able to lay eggs of its own first. So it's not going to be this Monday coming, but probably the Monday after. So there we go. Let's head on into the Spas Anomaly, and we're going to head on over to the egg machine, which is up the back here, over by Kronos, the guy that you turn into food stuff. Here we go. Egg sequencer. Brilliant. Hello there, egg sequencer. Right, now I've got to find the freaking egg that to put in here. Okay, where are you, egg? Right... Not seeing the egg anywhere for the Scottish Rod. I bet it's inside my ship freaking cargo. And it doesn't pick up ship cargo. It also doesn't pick up your freighter people. So yeah, it's a bit finicky. Right, I might have to move a few things around. You know what? I can speed up that footage. There it is in my cargo. Right, I need to move stuff around. Lovely job. There we go. A little bit of jiggery pokery. And uh, yeah, and tomfoolery. We're done. We've now got the egg in. We put the dirt in. You can see they're 100% dose. Coloration is unstable. Right, well now let's stick in the oxygen. Look at that. Helpfulness is increasing, like I mentioned earlier. I think the sodium does the... Um, Oh, devotion. I think that does devotion. So here we go. Let's do that. Brilliant. Now you can put the same in, egg in over and over again and keep boosting up that neuro sort of calibration. But you don't really need to go too far on town with when it comes to the colour. I usually do it a couple of times but just to make sure. Put about 50 in to make sure that it takes the coloration on the dye. But you don't really need to go any further than that, really. So here we go. Let's do that again. So here we are. Um, yeah, which one did I use? Sodium, wasn't it? Sodium? Yeah, let's put that in there. There you go, devotion. Devotion up 100% on that dose. So we go, let's blast it with that. Fantastic. When it changes to inherited, then you know that it's going to actually have that as its max stat. So I think I've already max stat its helpfulness. Let's put the Scottish rod back in again. Shall I do a little bit more dye? Mm, I don't know whether I need to. Let's just go to neural calibration then. And let's uh, do that again for devotion. You can see that it still says increasing at the bottom. It hasn't gone to inherited. So I'm just going to do this. I'm going to do this with all of the eggs that I have upon my person. And hopefully when we reconvene, we'll start hatching these things out, people. 
Well, how do the jumps are back down on good old Planet Blighty? Let's uh, put down my creature. It's actually called Planet Kina, but we'll, yeah, let's just ignore that. Ooh, look at that. It has picked up the red, white hues that I like inside my color, logo configuration. But would you check out those antennas? Look at those eye stalks. They're freaking green. That's pretty darn freaking epic, actually, isn't it? Lovely job. Brian, let's just spin this around. And yeah, there he is. He's looking freaking handsome, isn't he? He really is. He's looking majestic, in fact. Beautiful! Heck yes! He's now a freaking awesome, magnificent beastie. Let's have a better look at him. Okay, let's hit him up. And look at that. Helpfulness is 100%. Devotion, 100% as well. Got to wait till he grows up before he can lay some eggs. I'm going to call him Scottish Rod. And yes, he's looking freaking awesome. Hopefully you guys are going to want one of them. Let us know in the comments if you do. Right, well, there we go. Let's hatch Mofra then. Now, oh, great. This one has come out green. I don't think I can change Mofra red. He seems to be very much fixated on being freaking green. But he's a lovely, giant, great big green moth, and he does fly fairly fast. He's pretty cool. He's, he's much bigger than what a normal moth would be if you found one in the wild. And yeah, I've got him up to devotion on 100%, but the rest of the stuff is pretty much standard, isn't it, really? But at least he's got one stat that's maxed out, whereas my crab has got two. We're just going to rename this one back to being a Mothra. But yeah, I don't know whether I'm going to be giving these out inside of the egg giveaway. Let me know if you want one. I don't know whether it's going to be popular or not. So if you do want one, sound off in the comments what pets you want to see the most out of all the way these ones that I'm hatching today. So this one I'm going to be calling Mr. Miyogi. You know, look, it's been given the default name of Rookie. That's pretty cool anyway, isn't it? Anyway, let's make sure he's nice and happy. But yes, he's come out lovely and red. Freaking awesome. Let's check out his stats. So here we go. Let's hit him up. Boom. Right, yeah, two at 100% then. Yeah, due to full helpfulness and devotion. Lovely jubbly. Right, okay, well, I'm going to call him Mr. Miyoki. So let's just get that keyed in. Lovely job, and give that a save. Mr. Miyogi, there we go. Dundali, and done. Excellent. Right, so next up, Grass Licker. Right, now, I called this one Grass Licker because when you rode him before... He would just stay in the air for about, I don't know, 15 seconds, and then he would graze across the floor like he's doing there. You see what he's doing there? Didn't really go airborne. So I'm, oh, let's give him a treat. Let's make sure he's happy, and we're going to ride him. And we're going to see if he's going to be called Grass Licker, or whether he'll gain the name of Air Biscuit. And I just made him a little bit bigger. And it seems to have done the trick. He seems to be staying in the air. Oh, actually, no, look, he's on a decline. He looks like he might be making a beeline for the grass. Or is he doing that because we're going down into some sort of like little concave area? Maybe he keeps a, a set distance from the ground. Yes, look, he's rising. He's rising as the terrain rises now, people. It looks like he may be fixed. Yes, we might be able to get away with calling this little chappy Air Biscuit. Brilliant. Lovely. And that's probably going to be his new name. Let's head on uphill. Let's see if I'm right. Let's see if it goes on an incline. Oh, flying over the base might not be the best of test. But here we go. We'll fly past my ship and we'll see if it starts going up with the hill. If it does start going up with the hill, I think it's safe to say we can call him Air Biscuit. Upgrade him from Grass Liquor. So here we go. And yes, he's rising. He's rising. It works, people. This ah, freaking awesome. Brilliant. So now we have this creature that I could also give away. Again, if you want one of these, just call it the farting fish, or you can call it air biscuit, whatever. But yeah, I will be hopefully giving him away if you want one of those. Pretty darn freaking sweet, huh? Right, well, let's go and name him then. Let's check out his stats. Let's hit him up. Boom. Okay, none of his stats are 100%. No, I just worried about his size. I wanted to make sure I could make him fly before I invested too much. But you know what? We can call him Air Biscuits. And yeah, if you want to pump up his stats, you can. But to be honest, with flying ones, it hardly matters. They don't really... They don't really go get your resources. They just fly around. They might do the odd turd. But they're great for getting you over landscape, aren't they? So one left. Butter Lilla. Is he going to be red? He was blue. Oh, no. He's freaking green. He looks just like Mothra now. I think I've made him worse. Yeah, I don't really like him. Um, I could set fire to him, couldn't I? Shall we set fire to him? I'm going to test out my freaking flamethrower on him. Here we go. Take this, you. How do you like fire? Moth to the flame! Yeah, he didn't like that too much, did he? But no, they've actually managed to fix it now, people. You can't kill your own pets, which is a bit of a shame. Because that one, I think, deserves a bit of murdication. But yeah, look at that. It's got two stats that are at 100%. Now, you might be able to get it to recolor. 
I can happily give this one away. So if you do want a butter lilla, let us know inside of the comments. Heck yeah, so there we go, people. Bit of a pet showcase of what I'm working on and what I'm hoping to bring to the pet giveaway. Hope you enjoyed the video, people out there in the viewerverse. Until next time, take it easy. Cheery bye. Goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again. Well, thank you very much for watching. If you like what you see, please hit a like and a subscribe. And I'd like to say a massive great big thank you to all of my backers over on Patreon and over on YouTube membership. Thanking you, backers. And if you want to support this channel, just don't skip the adverts. That throws revenue down my avenue. Or yeah, just stay with Captain Steve a little bit longer and hit something on this screen. There's merch here now too.